What is it? Ed. Idea. Next time you cut my cinch strap, I'll what are you talking about? I never touched it. You're a nothing new about two cowboys trying to knock each other's teeth out. So I was surprised when one of them routed me out of bed that night and asked me to hot foot it over to the garden. You looking for someone, Mac? Yeah, Ed Murdoch. He's over there. Mr. Murdoch? Hi. Richard Diamond? That's right. Say hello to my wife. Come out. There she is. Cutting air through. If I'd ridden this saddle and the calf were open, it would have busted for sure. And I'd landed on the dirt in my head. But are you sure this was cut? It's almost as good as new this morning. Somebody wants to see me break my neck. Well, if you think that, Mr. Murdoch, you ought to call the police. Oh, no. I got a big question to settle first. You see, Bud Lee's back in the rodeo this year. Bud Lee? Ed thinks Bud cut that strap. We call the police. Bud might be disqualified. Ed's been champion cowboy for the past two years. But there has been talk that Bud could have beaten him out of it. He hadn't been laid up with a broken leg. Ed has a right to be proud of his title. He's worked years to get it. Now he wants to retire. We don't want that title clouded up. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Murdoch, that's all fine and good. So you just stick around. See that he doesn't try something else. Hey, Murdoch. Hey. Come check the new pony. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. Hi. Oh, hi. This is Richard Diamond. This is Charlie Decker. He takes care of Ed's investment. How are you, Mr. Diamond? Fine, how are you? I was just telling Mr. Diamond how glad I am he's here. He can keep Ed out of trouble. Yeah, he's under quite a strain. It's all keyed up. Ready to pick a fight over any little thing. And Ed's a scrapper. But then again, you gotta be to get anywhere in rodeo. Well, he isn't as rugged as he thinks he is. <laughs> well, as I understand it, you want to hire me as a combination bodyguard and, uh, diplomat. Yes. I don't want my husband to end up with a broken jaw or a cracked skull. I'll take care. Still going to play poker tonight? It's Tuesday, isn't it? A new pony's favoring his left foreleg. Charlie, put Mr. Diamond on the wall. And then take Marcy back to the hotel. I'm in the mood for some poker. Poker? You think you should? Honey, it's early. But after what happened with Buck Lee? I'm not going to run off and hide in the hotel room. I'll take Mr. Diamond with me. It'll make you any happier. Well, all right. But don't be out late. You have bronc riding tomorrow. I know. Good night. Good night. All right. Go on. Look, I want to talk to you about those aircraft securities. I think I'm going to pass them by. Got to start getting conservative. <laughs> start getting conservative? It's going to take a lot of cash to stock that ranch the way I want it. I'll take Marcy home. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. Yeah, goodbye.
I'll raise you. I was afraid of that. Come on, bud, take it easy, huh? I don't have to ride tomorrow. I got the day off. Got room for two more? Sorry, Murdoch. This is a friendly little game. Oh, we got lots of room. I'm uh, Bud Lee. Hi, I'm Richard Diamond. Hi, fellas. I take it you must be Mr. Murdoch's chief accountant. No, I'm just a writer doing a piece for the rodeo. A writer, huh? Yep. Well, we'll give you plenty to write about. Come on. And no thanks, I'm trying to quit. I guess I'll bet a fool. I'll call. A pair of Johns. Kings and trees. All right. Deal us in. It was right out of an whole Western movie. The poker game, the costumes, the liquor. You know, all that was missing was a slinky dame in a tight red dress hanging around in the background. Guess you're kind of surprised to see me here, huh? Just this morning he was trying to put the fight on me. What'd you do, Cloudy? Rob a bank? Got me a job. Got me a pip of a job. I, uh, hear you're doing pretty well with the rodeo this year. You said it. There's going to be a new champ this year. Right, Mr. Murdoch? I'll give you a story for your magazine. About the champ here. Oh, thank you, but I've already interviewed Mr. Murdoch. Come on, come on, let's play cards. He's the richest cowboy in the rodeo. He don't drink, he don't even smile. Just sits on that money. Uh, I believe it's yours to open. Pass. Oh, well, he does love that prize money. He loves it dearly. But he's... He's turning yellow. That's enough. Why, he's scared right down to his garters. That's how he's going to retire. That's why he's trying to get me disqualified. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow morning. <laughs> hey, I got another story for you. You see this here slug? That bullet was fired by a very famous man. A very famous man. And he gave me the gun, too. Hey, where's my Roscoe? Here, right here. My good luck charm. Don't bring me much love, but it's all I got. Come on, let's go. You're okay for our writer. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bud Lee was out of the way, so I figured there was no harm if I let my client play a few hands. I let him play a while, then talked him into going home. I guess you notice I don't run with a herd much. Matter of fact, I did. I'm not much on getting drunk and throwing money around. Not that I've got anything against the boys, but who wants to wind up like Cloudy Sims? I right, say what you mean. I probably would have if Marcy hadn't come along. You know, Cloudy used to be one of the best cowboys in the business. You guys didn't have someone to set him straight. <clears throat> you want me to stay over? No. Just pick me up tomorrow at 10. All right. Good night. Good night. Mercy! I'm out here, darling. Got home early. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ed. What happened this time? Nothing. Ed, that shirt did not get torn by itself. During humidity in this town stiffens up a rope like glue. I hate to sound like a school mom, but when are you going to learn how to behave? When are you going to leave me alone?
Where are you going? For a walk. You don't have to do that. I'm sorry. I just want to get some air. Now hold up. I'll go with you. Oh, you've got to get some sleep. I'm not tired. Besides, you can't go out there walking alone this time of night. Oh, look, darling, I don't like henpecking you all the time. Well, I guess you've got plenty of reason. You've been kind of hard to live with. Now remember this, one more week and we'll be through with this whole mess. No more cities, no more hotel rooms. We can start living like human beings. Police department, a hard working police department got me up at the crack of dawn. They batted me with a dozen questions about Ed Murdoch and then hauled me downtown. I had plenty of company, but that was no consolation. Nobody was feeling particularly sociable. Marcy, you all right? Lieutenant, how much longer does she have to stay? I can't tell you. Rick. Back. Fine detective you turned out to be. Three hours after you take the case, your client gets shot. And where were you? Home in bed. Mac, I told your boys, Mr. Murdoch said he was going to turn in for the evening. Yeah, it seems like everybody was home in bed. Balsam, Cloudy Sims, the Sloan brothers, and Bud Lee. Well, can they prove it? Not only Cloudy Sims, he just checked into a hotel. What about witnesses at the shooting? The boys combed the street, both sides. Everybody was asleep. Mrs. Murdoch was the only witness, and she didn't see the killer. Uh, the coroner sent these up, Lieutenant. Oh, thanks, Joe. Two slugs from the body, 45 caliber. But there is no murder weapon. What about Bud Lee's gun? He claimed somebody stole it while he was asleep. Well, you can still check. How? He wears a slug on his belt buckle. It was fired by that guy. It's about time you contributed to something. I tried, Lieutenant. Mr. Lee! Where did you get that slug? Will Rogers gave it to me. Will Rogers? He and my old man were buddies way back. He gave it to me when I was a kid. He gave me the gun, too. Where is the gun? I told the lieutenant. It's gone. I'd like to borrow that belt for a while. All right, wait outside. Joe. I want you to check that belt in for evidence and have the lab run a comparison between the slug on that belt buckle and these. Right. And here's that sketch you wanted. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Murdoch, please. Hi, Lieutenant. All right. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Murdoch, this is a sketch of the street where the shooting took place. Will you please show me where you were? You mean when the shots were fired? Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. Now, where did the shots come from? That doorway. Right here. Now, think clearly, Mrs. Murdoch. Did you see who it was? It was too dark in the doorway. I did hear something, though. What? A woman running away. A woman? I heard high heels clicking on the pavement. But you didn't see who it was. No. It all happened too fast. Well, thank you, Mrs. Murdoch. Will you wait outside, please? Thank you. 
A woman. Where does that leave us? Exactly where we were. Cowboys wear high heels, too. Yeah, that's right. The range was about 40 feet. The slug's hitting the bullseye just above the heart. I wonder if Bud Lee was sober enough to shoot that well. well he was a crack shot. He got his start with a trick shooting act. Who said that? The, the big guy, uh, Sims. Well, that's very interesting. How so? Well, Sims volunteered this information, I think? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ed Murdoch told me that Sims put the bite on him for some cash. Yet that evening he showed up at the poker game with a bankroll. He kept talking about a pip of a job he had. Sims. High heels. What about this new job you've got, Mr. Sims? Me? Yeah, you said you had a job, uh... A real pip of a job, to be exact. Oh, yeah. For grooming horses, naturally. For whom? Well, I... I can't recall his name just offhand. That's why they call me Cloudy. But I'd know him by sight. Now go. Grooming horses pays uh, pretty good money nowadays, doesn't it? Huh? Well, that was a pretty big bankroll you had in the poker game last night. Oh, thanks. Send me some pictures. Outside, Sims. We'll talk to you later. Ballistics. The slug on Bud Lee's belt matches those from Murdoch's body. There it is in black and white. Your gun killed Ed Murdoch. But I didn't do it. I was asleep. When Pete Balsam left my room, he must have left the door unlocked and someone came in and took my gun. Everyone knew that I took a poke at Murdoch. Somebody's trying to frame me. Why'd you have your gun on last evening? I told you it's a good luck charm, a souvenir. Did you always carry it? Well, come on, did you? We can easily find out. I've just been carrying it these past few days. Why? Well, you see, I've been doing pretty good in the rodeo and... Well, I'm so close to being champion, I carried my good luck charm. My gun. Will Roger said it'd always bring me good luck. I needed luck. But I didn't use it on Ed. I don't even have any shells for it. There's your motive. You killed Ed Murdoch so he'd be sure to win the championship. Maybe it looks that way, but I didn't do it. Joe. Look, I'm suspicion of murder. I guess I'll have to thank you for this. Yeah, me and my big fat magnifying glass. Don't tell me you feel sorry for this character. No, Lieutenant, just you. In case it turns out that he's innocent. I feel terrible about Bud. Well, why? He killed your husband? He wouldn't have. I'd kept Ed home last night. That's what I should have done, made him stay home. Well, I don't think you can blame yourself, Mrs. Murder. Of course not. You, you couldn't have known. I'm sorry. I, I'm just upset. Oh, Mr. Diamond. I hope this covers everything. Thank you. Mrs. Murdoch, if there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Dunn. Well, I'd done a nice job of putting Bud Lee's neck in the noose. But I wasn't satisfied that I had all the answers. I decided to go back to the scene of the crime and see if I could spot something the police had missed. It was starting to get dark when I got to the street where Ed Murdoch had been shot. I put myself in the cowboy boots of the killer. Well, it was no use. My hunch that Bud Lee might have been framed was thinner than a Swedish pancake. 
I was kicking myself for letting his sentimental speech make a sap out of me when the lights went on. Okay, let's go. Mr. Murdoch, that doorway lit up like a Christmas window. You must have had a first-hand look at whoever shot you out. I did not see him. Anyway, you don't have any right to come into this mean, apartment. I don't have any right. Look, the last time around you said it was a woman. Now it's a man. I said I thought it was a woman. I didn't see anybody. I wasn't looking in that direction. Lady, a gun goes off 40 feet away and you don't turn around to see who fired it? No, I did not. Now, why should I lie? Because you set your husband up like a tin duck in a shooting gallery. You knew he was going to be killed. I did not. Listen, I loved my husband. Enough to spend the rest of your life with him on a lonely ranch? No, Mrs. Murdoch, I don't think so. You're just not quite the type. Get out. Go on, you heard me. Get out. Certainly. Right after I call Lieutenant McGo. This is my telephone in my apartment. I told you to get out of here. You heard the lady. Charlie. Well, Mr. Decker. Put your hands up, Mr. Diamond. I wasn't going to stand by when he turned us in. Diamond, why'd you keep poking your nose in this? You got pay off. I hate loose ends. It offends my sense of order. I don't think you're going to have to worry about that much longer. Charlie, what are you going to do? You're going to get my car and drive it around to the back entrance. I'll take him down in the service elevator. No, Charlie, I don't want any more killing. There's no other way. I get your coat. Let's go. being foolish, Mac. I found out he killed Murdoch. Hey, man, suspicion of murder. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. We'll talk about it downtown. Out. Oh. You are getting good in your old age. I didn't know you were following me. I wasn't. I worked on Cloudy Sims. Finally got him to tell me where he got that bankroll. You mean the one he had in the poker game? Yeah, hush money from Decker. Sim saw Mrs. Murdoch cut her husband's saddle strap. I came here looking for those two. Glad you arrived on time. You're not upset by a little old 38, are you? The 38? No. It was just the indignity. The indignity? Yes. Being saved by you. Mm -hmm. 